Hi, I'm Helen Henderson, the Atlantic Coast Program Manager for the American Littoral Society. And you're about to view a few different videos from different people from all walks of life to talk about why Barnegat Bay is important to them. And we hope that after you hear their experiences and participate in our workshop, that you will be moved to make a difference for Barnegat Bay yourself by becoming a Barnegat Bay guardian. You will be the eyes, the ears, and the voice of Barnegat Bay out on the water. Together, we can make a difference and make Barnegat Bay better than it's ever been. Thank you. Well, the big change over the over the last 30 years is the population. 90 people, boats, and uh, sort of not respected. Okay? Running where they want to run, the jet skiers running through the marsh, chasing wildlife, churning up uh, you know the eel grass. Even the bigger boats are running nowadays 50, 60 miles an hour through three or four feet of water and the damage. And I see the eel grass just going away. Think about what's going on there. Uh, you can't help but imagine all the interactions between the physical parts of the bay and the living things that are in the bay. But on a personal level, there are always places of refuge for me. And I was, you know, throughout my life spent time on the water, or under the water, or in the water. Uh, so even though Barnegat Bay is developed, around the shorelines, it's still sort of a safe haven to get out there and you can uh, listen to the wind, you can listen to the water. Well, I live on the bay. It's uh, important to me to see it prosper. It's, uh, I enjoy being on it. It's, a, it's an important economic engine for this, uh, this part of New Jersey. And it's one of the, nation, the uh, natural treasures of this part of New Jersey. Uh, it's a beautiful estuary. I've, I've boated every inch of it uh, many, many times, and, uh, and it's under stress right now. We have to do things to, uh, to help it. Growing up, I kind of co-mingled with um, the last of the original generation of Bayman for uh, the Southern Barnegat Bay area. There was half a dozen or ten guys that were in their 60s and 70s, just when I was, you know, less than 10 years old. And um, just listening to their stories and kind of picking up on their values and the, and the type of day-to-day uh, -day life that they live, it, it kind of inspired me to strive for, you know, the, the Bay life. They, yeah, I know, you know the situation with the fertilizer is pretty bad. I understand that. Not completely, but I do understand. I see the runoff of all the streets and all the neighborhoods. Everything's getting dumped into the bay. It used to be that the development was on the Barrier Islands and some of the older communities. Then in the 90s, it really grew, uh, grew along the parkway. The forest that used to be between the parkway and the bay itself disappeared. Uh, big developments happened. So those kind of changes were really a loss for the quality of the environment. Um, and now we know they had a tremendous impact on the health of the bay. So it's gone from a bay that you know, was really heavily used and loved to one that now is heavily used, still loved, but it's a trial. When I was young, you know, when my father would pick me up in the Green Street, and I would go out in the bay and help him grade out his clams, you know, I, I could watch him shake out his clam rake, dump them on the deck of the boat, and you'd see this plume of bay mud drift by the boat with the tidal current. Uh, I mean, you don't need a PhD, you don't need to be a state employee, you don't need, you just need any level of common sense whatsoever to realize the tidal flow in the bay is nothing what it used to be. 
So all of the macroalgae, all that stuff you get caught on your fishing line when you're fishing in the summer, it goes to the bottom, it decomposes during the important setting seasons, and uh, the clams die. So there's clam larvae in the water in the bay, but when they hit bottom, they're dead. In response. Paved over the natural parts of the bay's watershed, you know, the forest that used to be there, they gave us clean water. We put too much fertilizer and other uh, contaminants on the ground, which then washes off, and we don't manage the stormwater correctly. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, ironically, as much as the state of New Jersey loves part of the day, we have to take care of it. Especially when I'm on the water, it chokes out the life. I mean, it's it's growth that's choking out life, but uh, but the result is uh, a bay that doesn't support the same kind of fish life and, and shellfish. And I think we have to get at the source of that, which is uh, which is things leaching into the bay in the first place. It's it's under stress because of man-made activity, and we and we can fix it you know, with man-made solutions if we work at it. So I uh, have prepared legislation that actually I will be introducing immediately when we get back. It's done. It's ready. It's been through legislative council at the, uh, the House of Representatives already. And I'm trying to simply create some incentives for people to create plans and then execute those plans to reduce uh, the flow of fertilizers into the bay, to create 25-foot plant barriers uh, between uh, residential and commercial properties in the bay. And we're doing it as part of the National Estuaries uh, Program. It's a, it's a $500 tax credit for creating a plan to reduce uh, uh, fertilizer flows into the bay. And it's up to $2,500 uh, credit for actually putting solutions into place. So I think uh, education, it's important, but I mean a stronger education program. Parsons have been supporting the Bayman, I mean, as far as our tax returns go, <laughs> all the way back to 1909. Wow. Uh, I mean, we've fed a lot of families, and my experience on the water is as far back as I can remember. I mean, when I was five, six years old, I was in the bay with my father. So it's it's been a, uh, a life of, you know, a lifelong education, so to speak. Uh, and I don't intend on quitting anytime soon. I mean, I'll, I, I hope to survive and, and uh, <laughs> produce more clams and feed more people. Um, but it's hard to say what's going to happen with the bay. It's really, it's, uh, it's a question everyone keeps asking. And I mean... You know, the only way that anything ever gets saved, gets protected, or gets restored is if people care about it. And the Bay Guardian program is all about connecting people to the water, about getting more eyes on the water. There are thousands of voters uh, that are out on the bay every day, and we really need them to be the eyes on the water, to help us keep an eye out and to find problems that we can fix them. There's no silver bullet here. Uh, we have to do a lot of things, and one of them is just people with eyes and ears uh, Paying attention and being part of the solution. You need really to get out there with some big, big operations, big news corporations, big people out there showing the people and letting them realize, wow.